This is Armand, and he went from zero to about $30,000 per month at 17 years old. And what's wild is that he did it in only four months. This month, we're about to do 30K. He started an SMMA in the Mets Spanish, and he's got big plans for the future. Like, how big do you want to get it? I want to scale to at least 100K per month, sell it, and then repeat the process. In this video, we're sitting down with him and chatting about how teenagers can make money online. How many times did you make and then lose 10 to 20 grand in crypto? Like about five times. And how entrepreneurship can change your life. You guys are not going to believe the value in this video. It's a masterclass on what it takes to actually hit $10,000 per month as a team. Let's jump into it. All right, guys, we got the legend Armand in the house. And uh, Armand, how old are you, man? Uh, I am 17 as of this date. As what? 17 as of this date. Today? Yep. It's your birthday? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, oh, okay. <laughs> no, we're not going to restart. That's great. Okay. So right now, great. you're 17 right now. 17. Yeah. Damn, I thought, I was like, damn, it's Armin's birthday. Let's go. And um, <laughs> what's the most amount of money your business made in a single month? Uh, so last month, we did about 19K. Um, I remember last I spoke to you at 17, 19K. Um, currently, we're at the 32, 33 mark as of today. So you're this just, month. You're, you're doing over 30,000 a month yep. with your agency. This month, yeah. Wow, that's wild. So, um, 17, mm -hmm. doing over 30K a month with yep. SMMA. Yep. So, uh, Armand, why don't you take it a step back for us and uh, share your story? How did you get here? Did you start your SMMA, I guess, while in high school? Yeah. Are you still in high school? I'll have to get to that. Yeah, so pretty much my journey started, I'd say, ever since I was a little kid, where I always had that entrepreneurial drive, um, always trying to make money. I remember starting off selling candy in high school. Uh, not in high school, um, middle school. I was about 12 or 11. And I remember trying to sell candy. I ended up eating the whole thing. I was like a little fat kid, but. <laughs> For real? Yeah. I was a little chubby too. Yeah, I was a, I was a pretty little fat kid. Um, Before high school, yeah, I was pretty chubby. <laughs> yeah. I ended up eating all the candy. Made, I think I made like a sailor or two, but. Yeah, what kind of candy was it? Do you remember? It was just like chocolates and stuff. Like I think like I lost money. On, I'm pretty sure I lost money on it. <laughs> but I, I had the mindset. I just, I just wasn't there. You killed there your yet. own business. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and then from there, I had like a YouTube channel, which I, you know, uploaded every day on. I edited all my videos. I was more of like a content kind of guy. And I pretty much just make YouTube videos every day, you know, consistently posting. I would get like about 300 views per video. And I actually had like fans that would, you know, message me and say, oh, when's the next post coming and stuff. So that kind of filled my dopamine as a little kid. And then fast forward, like I'd say a year. What were you talking about on YouTube? It was just like vlogs of my life. I would do like pranks on my sisters. Uh, just, yeah, just like life content and stuff. Well, yeah, I was actually, uh, I was like a scooter rider. I used to like professionally kind of ride scooters. For real? Yeah, but I, I wasn't that good. I was like, I was like a fat kid on a scooter. It's oh, like shit. <laughs> yeah, so I used to make content about but that. But you could do like tricks? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit here and there. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's pretty much making content. And then I switched to, so actually what kind of, I think killed my entrepreneurial drive was video games, right? I was um pretty much uploading every day, making, being really consistent. And then I feel like, I feel like this isn't talked about enough, but how like bad video games are, right? I feel like a lot of kids nowadays play video games and like, like completely gives you that validation that you're doing good because um, you're leveling up in the video game, right? People would rather level up in video games rather than in real life. So I feel like that kind of big, that took a big toll on my life. I spent like about four or five years just playing video games. Wow. This was like from middle school all the way through high school? Or? I'd say, yeah, all, from when I was like, um, like nine to like 14 like lots of video games and I was kind of addicted right I was like a little fat kid that played video games and I'd eat like a large pizza every night so pretty much I was I wasn't living the best life right so pretty much the way I started my journey was I remember my family actually took a vacation to um, Pakistan right that's where I'm from right so we kind of went there we went back for a couple months or so and I was distant from my video games right so I never really played them back there and that kind of gave me time to think I was like okay like, what am I actually doing with my life? Like, what is the purpose? I tried figuring things out. And then, you know, I came across like myself being, you know, dialed into video games, trying to find a sense of validation through video games, you know, being better. And then I didn't, I didn't like where, where that was going. So I started like finding out ways to make money, all these things. I did lots of drop shipping. Uh, I remember I made like two sales, but they ended up getting like chargebacks. Cause like, For real? it was from like AliExpress. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This and is then, in high school now or? Yeah, so this is pretty much um, last year of middle school, right? And then I'd say- So you were drop shipping in middle school? Yeah, I was like 12 or 13, I was like drop shipping. But like, it wasn't the best. Like I made like two sales, I got a couple of chargebacks. And yeah, 
And then pretty much from there, I started like reading these self-development books. I remember this book called Psycho Cybernetics, um, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, all these kind of books. And you so, read them in middle school or high school? Yeah, middle school. That was like end year, last year middle school. I, I bought all these books and all these things. And then start of high school. I Did actually, anyone tell you about those books or were you just like? Yeah, so I bought a coach coaching program. It was like a, it was like a course. And it was like a $300 drop shipping course that I took from my mom and like she let me buy the drop shipping course. And that guy was just telling about mindset stuff. Yo, shout out to your mom. That's like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's wild. Yeah, so look, yo, mom, I'm gonna learn how to make money online. You wanna let me borrow <laughs> 300 bucks? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. No, my mom's been a pretty big advocate for me. Um, she's always supported me like throughout the entire way. So I give. That's any, really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my dad, on the other hand, you know, it's been it's been that it's been there, but he he always wants me to pursue that kind of traditional model, just you know, going to university and stuff. All right. So your, your mom was really supportive and uh, she bought you this $300 drop shipping course. Yeah. And then, uh, did you make millions? No. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much when I had those two sales. Right. And then pretty much got, ended up getting chargebacks. It wasn't the best course. He was t- talking more about mindset and stuff. Just like told me to read a couple of books and then I feel yeah. like courses back in the day were trash. Yeah. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible. Like the standard, it was just like, yeah, go read this book. Yeah. But like now it's like you really have to know exactly. your shit. Exactly. Um, so then it, they told he told you to read those books. Yeah, he told me to read those books. It was like mindset training, getting your mind fixed first. But there was like 10% just drop shipping content, how to run ads and all these things. And I could have found something better on YouTube. So there's that. And then after my kind of drop shipping venture, I started going to high school. Um, those, did those books really help you? I mean, kind of did it changed my mindset a little bit, right? Since I was like, I'd say since I was like eight years old, I've always had this mindset where like, you know, I would never like work for someone because I never saw anyone in my family do that. My dad owned a business. Uh, my dad's families, so they all own businesses and stuff. So I never really saw myself working for other people. And I thought that was the same for everyone else, right? Everyone else wanted to, you know, own a business and stuff. And then when I went to high school, I started seeing people, you know, really talk about jobs and like working for people. And that it, it kind of didn't make sense to me why someone would do that. And now, you know, a couple of years later, I, f- I started finding out like that people actually do this stuff. People get work for other people. It's like jobs, they get jobs and these things, which I don't know, it was weird for me. I was kind of a weird kind of kid, but yeah. So at this whole time, I knew I was going to eventually do something like eventually going to drop out, become like a high school dropout or like a university dropout or something. Cause I'd see all these t- teens online making money at that time, I saw people, you know, just doing bigger things with their lives and, you know, going to university to get a job and all these other things. So I always saw myself, you know, just not pursuing the traditional model, right? And then, yeah, in high school, I'd say um, 10th grade, I started trading crypto, right? That was kind of my main kind of hustle. So I started trading crypto. So you're like 14, 15? Yeah, 14, 15 around there. I started trading lots of crypto. I, it was like the bull market, which means, you know, so everyone's good at trading crypto. Exactly. Yeah. And then kind of when the bull market hit, I started making, I, I had like 500, four, I had $200. I turned that into like $500 with crypto and it really hit me like, okay, like I just made this money appear out of thin air. And I was like, you know, let me just do this a couple more times. And then I remember like starting off with like $200 and kind of working my way up, losing lots of money, making lots of money in the process. But I started mastering the game of like trading, how markets work and just accessing data, like trading view, like reading charts and all these things. So I started kind of learning those skills. And then I'd say um, a year goes by, no, not a year, I'd say like, I'd say four months go by and you know, I'm trading crypto. I built my portfolio up to like, say 20K. Oh um, wow, 20K? Yeah, I was like around 16 at that time, right, 20K. So you probably thought you were like a Yeah, legend. I thought, yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, 20K at that age, at like that age, just yeah. trading crypto. It's like, man, I didn't even have to run a business. <laughs> yeah, that's when it was like the bull market and stuff, right? And then so pretty much I was trading. I learned this thing called futures. It was pretty much like leverage, right? So you would do 2X and like it would pretty much double the amount of money you would have. So you're pretty much using leverage, which was kind of unsafe, right? Because you can end up losing the whole thing. I tried started doing that. I did quite well and pretty much losing the entire 20K. Oh, you and lost it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. I lost it all. I was like depressed. I knew that was coming, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I did say, I should have said, I'm sorry a little while ago. Yeah. So I, I knew was that like, was coming. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> so I was pretty depressed for a while. Dude, I'm sure, old. like, to because it's like everything. Everything, yeah, everything. Like, you know, it, um, there's a saying goes like it's it's a lot harder to lose money than it is uh, exciting or fulfilling to yeah. gain the money. Mm -hmm. It's like it's extremely more painful when you have it and then you lose it. Yeah, I'm sure, like at that age, that was really hard, man. It hit me really hard. Like I was depressed. Like even though like I didn't have any bills to pay or anything. It's just like that was my money. I could have like done anything with it. Yeah, I remember I had like 1.4 million in um, Anchor Protocol. Oh. And uh, oh shoot. I saw the. Uh, Were you doing the staking? Yeah. Oh man. Um, and then I saw it get depegged. And then yeah. I'm trying to pull it out and it's not working. It's not working. Yeah, it's not working because they were like super delayed. Mm -hmm. I got it out. I lost like $200,000. That's crazy. And I remember I was like, I was like in shock. Like yeah. you feel like you're it's dead. Like, it's like, unreal. it's like someone is, yeah. it's like, it felt like I was bleeding. Someone, yeah. It feels like someone just like stabbed you and like, yes, it, it's very strange. It felt mm -hmm. like the world was ending. Like uh, it felt like I was bleeding. Yeah, exactly. But I'm but at 16, like at 16. Yeah. But I was, I'm so appreciative of those times. Cause now like, I feel like I don't, losses don't affect me at all. Like I'd lose like, so we'll kind of get into this later, but when I hit 10 K, I pretty much went all the way back down to zero and then got it back up to 10K in like the next two weeks. And it didn't affect you as much. It didn't affect me at all. Like I, I had no emotions. I just knew that, you know, I'll just get it back up. But that those losses for crypto, it like really benefited me. Cause like, you know, I lost the pain. Like I, I didn't feel pain when I was losing money or anything. Cause I knew I'd still have those skill sets. Like I could still build it back up. Right. And then, yeah. So pretty much made that money with crypto, lost a lot of money. I remember I had zero dollars in my name. So I started selling things around my house to get back up my trading account. I remember selling a couple things. I stole like, I sold like, I sold like video games. You stole or you sold no, it? <laughs> I sold like video games that I had had and like some consoles and stuff. And then I remember I had like $500 left in my trading account. I, I got it up to $500 and then I, I lost like $400 from there. So then what I started doing was I was like, all right, I'm down to my last hundred dollars. I need to make this work no matter what happens or I die. Like I'll go broke, I'll go homeless or something, even though like it's not possible. Yeah, because you're in high school. Yeah. And yeah, so pretty much I started like paper trading. I would just, you know, trade fake stocks with like fake um, indicators and stuff. It would be real time, but it would just be like with fake money. I don't know how that works. but So like it's just fake money and it's just based on real time market, right? So you put a fake $100 into a stock. If it goes up, it goes up on the same thing as like the actual market. It's just you're trading with fake money. So why were you doing that? Just to practice? Just to like practice and like build my skill set of trading and get even better. And then I remember taking that hundred dollars, I started trading leverage and then I got that account. So I'd say two months go by and I got that account to around $15,000 from a hundred, a hundred dollars to $15,000 in the span of two months, which was really crazy to me. Like I was just really happy with that. And yeah, so I was pretty much trading. I was just losing a lot of money. I was making a lot of money. And I remember just one point I was making like a thousand dollars a day at like, you know, 16, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, so I made Were a lot you of telling people in school about this. Did anyone know? Like, no, but I started just like not showing up to school and stuff. And then uh, I would tell my friends, I would kind of like flex on them and stuff. But <laughs> yeah. well, what, what would you do? Like, I, I wouldn't hint at how much I'm making, but like, I just like show them screenshots of like, you know, the daily trade for today, this one made and stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, from there, I'd say I traded quite a bit. I lost a lot of money, made a lot of money. Um, and then I remember we were going for a vacation and before the vacation, I set up my, you know, daily trades as usual, all those things. And then I remember there's something called a stop loss, right? So if it hits this certain number, it basically takes you out of the trade with a small loss. So I remember the night before I forgot to set a stop loss and I woke up pretty much $0 in my account and went from like 15 K to like $0 within the span of like a day, like a night. And we were going for vacation on that day to like some Airbnb in like a cottage. And I remember like I couldn't swallow my food like while we were over there. Like I, I was like shaking in the car and stuff. Yeah, you're like not learning your lesson. Yeah. You're like continuing to full send the training. Exactly. Yeah, I know. And then you're that, like torturing yourself yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like I just like kept losing a lot of money having these like emotional roller coasters and these things. And then, yeah, I st I, that kind of demotivated me. It took me out of the entrepreneur space. I remember I sold a bunch of more things in my house, got back up to $500, lost all that money. And then trading? Yeah, yeah, trading. So it kind of went nowhere because I feel like I included leverage in that. I feel like I never should have yeah. like, you know, because I was trading. You're trading with their money pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. And, you know, I don't I don't believe in that kind of model. 
So yeah, pretty much did that. Um, we were going back to our country, Pakistan, right? The one I told you about. We go there like every year, I'd say for two months. And then when I went there, I still had some like more- Like in the summer? No, in like the winter. It's like really hot there in the summers. We like go in the winter, winter break. That's when I have off from school. But you go for two months? The school didn't care? Yeah, so I, it was online school at the time. It was like COVID. Oh, okay. Of, yeah, so, but I just never showed up to class. Class started at like 6 p.m. there and then like 12 a.m. I just like never went and yeah, from there I started, you know, I had so much more time to think. I was away from all my distractions and NFTs were pretty big at that time, right? So, oh no. <laughs> yeah, so NFTs were pretty big. I was like, okay, like I got into, I got to get into these <laughs> NFTs and started making money through these, you know, like I got, like I see all these kids making money and then I had no money to my name. I couldn't buy an NFT and like trade it. Like I, I had zero dollars. So pretty much what I did was I said, you know, instead of like trading NFTs, let me try to like make an NFT or, you know, do something like that. And then I remember approaching this one project that they were pretty much launching. And I feel like, you know, they could have done some better things. Cause, um, so yeah, pretty much what I did was I started working for them for free. I was like, let me just work for you guys for free. They made me like a admin, right? So I could pretty much control the events, control the community that was in the discord and all those things. So it was kind of like, um, a job, but I was working for free. So yeah, I pretty much work for free for them, give them ideas. I pretty much labeled their, you know, how much they should sell, how many, um, how many NFTs they should sell out, how much it should list their NFT price at, all these things. Cause I did a lot of research into NFTs when I didn't have money, right? Cause I had so much time. I had lots of research, lots of studying, how they work, um, how you can create NFT projects and all these things. So I started telling them things that, you know, that could improve their project. And then they were like, oh yeah, just work for free. You know, I, I was fine with working for free. I was like, just give me a free NFT at the end. And then pretty much fast forward like a month later, those guys ended up launching and pretty much selling out, right? They made around $3 million. And then those guys are pretty happy with me, like how the stuff I did for them, you know, I made them quite a bit of money. They just like gave me 10 grand. And that was like one of the happiest days of my life. Right? just like, they just like sent me $10,000 in my wallet. It was around 10 to $15,000. It went up to like 20,000, but um, yeah. So went back down to zero. Yeah. So did I knew that was coming? Yeah. I pretty much um, kept falling back in the trap of like trading, <laughs> but yeah. So from there, um, just working on NFT projects, right? Just like I started approaching. So you lost it. I lost like I didn't lose. I didn't lose all of it. I lost some of it, like trading NFTs. But I was like, I don't want to trade NFTs. I want to like make NFTs. I want to be like, um, you know, instead of all these kids trying to buy and flip NFTs, I'll like make them or like help projects sell out. Cause it was kind of like a marketing company. Yeah. Yeah. I was like helping them sell out and all these things. So yeah, I pretty much started helping them, helping other projects sell out. I was like, okay, I just sold this project out. So I had testimonial, right? I was like, I just sold this project project out. Let me help you guys. So working with lots of companies, I was making a lot of money. Like I remember um, I got transferred a big sum amount of money and yeah, pretty much from there, I just started doing that. Just started helping other projects sell out and I made quite a bit of money. And so it was kind of like a retainer, right? So it'd be like a $500 a week retainer, $2,000 a week retainer. And these guys were spending a lot of money. Wait, $500 a week, $2,000 a month? $2,000 a week. Like there were some projects that were willing to pay that. So you're making 8K a month from, yeah. from some projects. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, yeah. I was around 16 that, I was still 16. I was almost about to turn 17. But yeah, pretty much just helping projects sell out. I made a lot of money because, um, you know, it was a bull market as well, right? There was like an NFT bull market. And then closer to the end, the NFT market started dying out. Um, Project started going out of business and, you know, I started losing lots of clients and yeah, ETH, ETH started going down. So I pretty much all the money that they paid me was in stored in Ethereum and ETH started going down. I remember I lost like 20 K overnight and just like, you know, the price of ETH going down. At this point you're like, do you, are you still getting like mentally fucked? Not really. Like, or are you just more used to it? I was, I was just used to it. <laughs> this is like the seventh time. <laughs> yeah. I was used to it. I was pretty much used to like losing money. Like I was like, I had no emotions at that That's, point. I think this is actually in the long run going to be one of your Definitely. greatest strengths ever. Cause you can literally, you are literally emotionally detached from yeah. whatever happens. And then you can actually attack the situation with pure logic exactly, and with mental clarity of what needs to actually get done. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much just removing I think it's going to be one of your greatest strengths ever. Maybe it's going to be for maybe in the moment it felt like literally yeah. the world was ending, but man, if that happened that many times, you're that probably comfortable times. with the discomfort of losing that amount mm -hmm. of money. I was like so comfortable losing the money. Like I would lose a lot of money overnight. I'd be fine the next day. I'd be like, okay, let me just like make a little more. Let me reach out to some more projects and stuff. 
So yeah, pretty much. Um, You're going to be doing some big move later on in life. Yeah. Where it's going to require you to tap in like, to this mm. uh, mental fortitude because, man, Definitely. that's the universe wants you to learn this lesson. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just took it as that. Just the universe giving me lessons for now. And, you know, it's probably for a reason. And I think that, you know, everything really happens for a reason. Right. So I feel like that all happened for a reason. Right. Now I'm pretty much detached from the emotion of losing money. So like when I hit 10K originally and I lost pretty much all my clients, I, I had no emotion whatsoever. I thought I, sh I should be feeling bad, but I just didn't feel anything. And I was pre really grateful for that. And then I thought I, um, I remember the times where I'd lose all that money in crypto and things. But yeah. So from there, all the projects started going down, downhill. I, I was down to my last $10,000. And from there, I remember just like trying to find ways to make money. I started like a, a window washing company. Really? From there. Yeah. I did that for a couple months. I just like go to doors, knock on doors. You're not going to school pretty much at this point. I am going to school, but I'm just like not going enough. Like so I, I go like once school. or twice a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like, Hey guys, I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I just like, I never went to school. And then, yeah, from there, um, did lots of window washing. I was, I would approach like houses and stuff. I would say, Hey, like I'd pitch them and stuff. And I'd say, you know, um, we do window washing. We'll pretty much make your entire house like, um, nice and shiny from the outside. And it was like rich neighborhoods. I didn't make like $300 a house. Right? Yeah. I'd spend like an hour kind of doing the, the window washing. I had like this water extended water fed pole that could reach the top windows. And I wish I knew a little more about the agency because I start, would have started delegating and just spend most of my time knocking on doors rather than actually doing the window washing. Mm, you were doing both service yeah, delivery and sales. Exactly. So and every time you get a client, it's like one step forward, one step back. One yeah. step forward, one step back. Mm -hmm. I remember my first day I did it, I made like $1,000 or so. Did you lose it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> but yeah, pretty much from there, um, I did a couple, couple times. I, I think I made quite a bit of money. And from there, my dad didn't like the idea of me like window washing. Right, because it wasn't like a respectable thing, I guess. But I was learning lots of skills. You know, I was learning the skills of like talking to people, going uh, going up to houses, and you know, having conversations with people, sales skills, all these things, which helped my agency as well. And then from there, I stopped. I stopped doing the window washing. It was winter time in Canada, right? So it was like snowing and stuff. And from there, when I um, when I was supposed to go to my last year of high school, right, grade twelve, that was like senior year, and from there. I pretty much, you know, I didn't have that much money. Like I just put it back into crypto, started losing even more. Um, yeah, from there, I, I knew it was coming. Yeah, I, I lost, I lost a little can more I, money. Can I just officially ban you from investing in crypto? Yeah, I, I give you permission for that. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> but now I, I feel like if I invest now, I'd be more smart since I've like, <laughs> no, that's what they all say. That's true. No, I'm not going back to crypto. Did you got to, have you learned the lesson? Kind, kind of, not really. <laughs> you got to stop, really. bro. But anyways, keep going, keep going. Yeah. So I just like the dopamine for like crypto. I know, but it's like, um, the only, the, the problem with investing, um, the, the, the problem with investing in things like crypto is you're not, con you don't have enough control. You have, yeah. there's too many variables that are outside of your control. Like, and if you're going to day trade, for example, I'd rather you day trade like a stock that you believe in where it's like, if I exactly. get stuck in this trade, all right, long, tr maybe I'll lose money for now, but like I'm betting on the mm -hmm. company, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, crypto is like all these garbage coins that people just create out of their mom's basements and stuff. So like I was trading those. But yeah, from there, um, I was supposed to go to university the following year after my senior year, right? Which I hated. I hated the thought of me at, like going to university after I always knew since like the seventh grade that I was going to drop out eventually. Like I was never going to go to university or college, never go down the route that everyone else was going, right? Because I, I always had this thing of like being different and I just don't want to be like other people have access to the same information as other people because then you know that information isn't like valuable right so from there after my window washing after all that stuff i went into so i was supposed to go to school and i realized you know i realized the stuff i was doing in my life it's not benefiting me at all like i started falling back into old habits started getting lazy and from there like i had like a wake-up call and I remember saying, you know, like now I'm going all in, right? I'm going to university next year. I'm going to college. I've always wanted to never go be that dropout kid that never went to university or college and made it to be successful without, you know, going to university or college. And from there, pretty much uh, I, I dropped out of my normal high school and then switched to a different high school where I wouldn't have access to any of my friends. Right? So I cut out every distraction possible. And you I, did this consciously? You were like, I'm going to do this? Yeah. So I, I had this thing. Did where something happen that triggered that event or were you just like... 
one day no, wake up call. Yeah, I just looked around at my friends, the people I, hang, I was hanging out with. They just didn't have the aligned goals as me, right? The stuff they wanted to do in the future. I mean, they were great kids, I guess. But, you know, we just weren't aligned and they were kind of benefiting me in any way, right? So, like, they didn't have any, like, as guys, I think that we have, like, a value of exchange, right? Right now, we're exchanging value together. And that's what I think friends should be for, you know, exchanging value. Like, that friend should make you a better person or you should make that friend a better person. You should learn things from that friend. And it doesn't have to just be money, I think. Exactly. Too. Yeah. So you could like a person could be like really righteous and have like a someone could be religious. And if you like start being friends with them, you start getting religious and, you know, following a better path, being a better person. And that 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 benefits you. As or well. Like I have a friend that's so funny and he just every time I hang out with him, I feel happier. Exactly. Like yeah. that's a value exchange, too. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. I've never thought about it that way. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that's my personal opinion, right? I think like if you oh if you want to just like hang around, just do nothing. I just I feel like you should do it with your family, right? Building connections with your family rather than just you know going out with your friends. I feel like you should rather just go out with your family. Um, I feel like friends are just you know you think there to like exchange value, benefit each other, help each other out, and you know I don't see the point in being fr friends with like people who just have no idea where their lives are going if you don't align with them, right? And if they don't kind of support you, which I, I didn't really see any of that. Anytime I'd bring up like self-improvement or like business, they would kind of shut it down and be like, no, we don't, we won't talk about this, all these things. So I just didn't like, you know, like having that. And then from there, I pretty much stopped talking to all my, like I had like 10, eight or nine friends that I'd, you know, known for like seven, eight years. And I pretty much just like didn't start to speak to them for like after that day. And you switched I, schools. Yeah, I switched schools, right? So I could know no one there. I would be a complete stranger. Like I would have no friends purposely. I purposely did that. And then, yeah, I switched to that school. Uh, I had no friends. I remember at recess or lunch break, I would just sit in the library and try to figure out things to do, try to find like a, like a business model that I would want to start. And then, yeah, I started wandering around. I came across this guy named Hens. Hens advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then he pretty much, um, I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy your mentorship. I'm gonna learn the agency model. He has like an e-com agency kind of thing. He he wants you to start an e-com agency. I paid him like $1,500 for his course and mentorship. And then he pretty much ghosted me from there. <laughs> he just never replied to That's me. That's fucked up. Yeah. And then pretty much never replied to me. I remember he was supposed to, he said, oh, we have a course. We have like, we have like a whole course that's built inside of the, inside of the mentorship. There's a bunch of students doing really well. And I was like, can you send me access to the course? So he sent me access to the course. And later that day, I, I had a video call with him and basically him selling me on the program. And he had this like stain on his shirt, right? And then when I saw the course, it was like that same stain on the shirt. So I could tell that he recorded that same video that the same day he sold me that program. Wow. Yeah, so he didn't, he didn't really have a course. He was just like, he just sold me like a $1,500 mentorship. I thought you were just going to say that he, that it, you were just going to comment that he had a stain on his shirt in general. No. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I don't know why I thought that's where you were going with it. <laughs> but yeah, so he had the same stain, so I could tell he recorded that video the same day, and he had that same course that he recorded at the same day. And then, yeah, I was pretty disappointed because like I put... Of course, yeah. Yeah, because I finally believed in like a business model. And, you know, invested in like an actual program, which I never really did before that. And then, yeah, pretty much just fell down that same hole. Like, I just didn't know where I was going. Um, I wanted to start an e-com agency. I knew I was going to start like an which, agency. Which, by the way, like one of the reasons why, like, I'm on a mission to destroy all the gurus on the internet by giving everything away for free is because, like, I don't think you should, I don't think you should charge money for the course. Like, yeah. the information should be free. And that's where you can say, yo, this is legit. And I'm able to add value. And therefore, I've earned the right for you to hire me for either coaching or implementation. Exactly. Like, yeah. I think uh, if, if someone can't even add value with information to show you, hey, mm -hmm. this is legit and I can help you out, they don't, they have not earned the right to ask you for money. They do yeah. not deserve your money. Mm -hmm. And I think it's unethical for people to charge for information. I think the right way to do it is to say, hey, look, here's my value. I can actually help you out. You can validate it for yourself for yeah. free. If you get results, cool. Then let's talk about mm -hmm. what it would look like to work more closely together. Exactly. That's what Agency Lab is, right? So yeah, pretty much just um, tried finding ways to make money. Um, I remember that's like on when, YouTube. Yeah, on point? YouTube and stuff. So that's when Thomas going. Did you just like? Up. Did you just like look up like how to make money? Or no, was no, no it was like, just like it was like I wasn't that dumb at that point. It was just like I was like I want to start an agency something. Okay, you were aware. Like, I was aware agency. of the agency model. Okay, cool. Because you, you had because at that point you're trading, you're doing NFTs. Yeah. Like you're doing marketing, like, you know, what's mm. you're, you're, you're pretty exactly. in the game. Yeah. 
And then Thomas Gone uploaded a video, and then that's pretty much, I was like, oh, this seems pretty cool. Like, no one's really doing it like this guy. Like, he's calling his appointments, or calling his clients' leads and stuff. So it made kind of more sense. And then I started watching a lot of his videos. Um, he launched, like, a Discord. I was in that Discord for a while. And then I remember you did, like, a... You partnered up with Thomas, and you did, like, a master series in his Discord. Yep. Yeah, and, yeah. And then I was like, oh, this guy's pretty interesting. This Joel Kaplan guy. I checked on your, I checked your Instagram out. I was like, oh, five clients guaranteed. No way. That's crazy. I remember signing up for the program, but I knew I was not going to join. I wasn't going to spend like any money on the program after my previous experience. And then, yeah, time went by. I was just like trying to, I had like a small agency. didn't have any clients. I was cold calling, like just dialing people, didn't get any appointments. And then I remember I was in school. Uh, it was like English class. And I got a call from one of your appointment setters and they were telling me about agency. I was like, okay, let me just take this real quick. I went to the bathroom. Um, I was talking to, I don't know who it was on the phone, but they were asking my goals and stuff. And they were like, okay, yeah, we can help you achieve those goals. I was like, oh, okay, okay, that's pretty cool. And then they sent me on a demo call with um, this guy and I hopped on the call. He told me about Agency Lab, all the other people that are successful showed me some results. And I was super excited. Like I was like, man, like. I, this has to be me. Like I, I, this could be me. And then, yeah, he gave me the price point. And at that point it was like a, it was like a $6,000 program, right? Obviously there's like way cheaper programs pretty much. Um, we, we've set it up now where we like have different yeah. options pretty much at every level. So, um, mm. like as low as $1,500. Yeah. But all coaching, it's like the values in the coaching, the community, not in the information. So you could find literally the same information on my YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but from there, I he told me the price point, which is I think it was like five thousand dollars, not six. It was like five thousand dollars, and I checked my Ledger wallet. That's where my uh, NFT and crypto money was stored. I was at like six thousand dollars, and I was like, man, oh shoot, this looks kind of nice. And then I was like, you know what? I'll think. I'll think about it, and because I was like, most of my money is crypto, and you guys don't take crypto. And we then we do. We do now. Yeah, because of me. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I have no. That's like why. So. I remember uh, a week went by and then I had another call with like the the closer, right? And then he was like, oh, we do accept crypto now. And then he was like, Joel just said we can accept crypto. And then I remember sending him like $5,000 right there and I had $1,000 left on my account. I was like, man, like I really have to make this work now. Like I just put my money in this. And then I remember starting like a roofing agency. It was kind of went nowhere. Um, I feel like I, I said- We had a one-on-one -on -one call. Yeah, we had a one-on-one -on -one call. Um, you told me, you know, you gave me a pretty good niche. Um, but yeah, when I was, when I had my, uh, roofing agency, I remember like I was doing outreach, I was doing IG DMs. I had a VA that was sending DMs. I just wasn't getting any appointments. Um, I feel, I remember I took a bunch of intro calls in my school, set a couple appointments. I remember finally setting a one appointment where a roofer showed up and I had my demo presentation ready. I was practicing for it all day. Uh, I remember hopping on the call and my like leg was twitching. My arms were like shaking. Like I was going next on the demo presentation. Like my, my hand was like shaking. I don't know why I felt like if I mess this up, like, you know, everything was going to go wrong. Like this is my last, this is my only chance. And then I, I know that exact same thing. Yeah. yeah. And then two slides into the pres presentation, the roofer was like, man, I don't give a shit about your presentation. Just like get, get to the pricing. And that like, yo, that crushed me. I was like, man, that's, that's crazy. And then I, I don't know what I was saying. I, I don't, I didn't even know what I was selling him to be honest. Like I was selling him Facebook ads and then he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sign you on, but for a paper appointment thing. And I was like, oh yeah, let's do, let's do it. And then he ended up just like ghosting me. Yeah, so I didn't have any success with my roofing agency. This was about, oh, I'd say December. And then I remember having a one-on-one -on -one call with you. And then I, you know, you gave me a pretty good niche. And then I started like, you know, actually setting proper goals. So I started breaking down my goals, right? Which I'm- Can you talk here. about that? Yeah, so- I, You shared that with the community and I thought that was really powerful. Maybe hmm. you could share it, share it here. Yeah, so pretty much with like- What were you doing before? Like what was the goal setting process before? So it was just like, I was just going nowhere, right? I was like, I want to get to 10K per month, but like I didn't have like a proper breakdown plan on how I would do it. I, would, I just said, okay, I'm just going to send some DMs. Hopefully people reply. Hopefully I set some appointments. But then I started like framing in a certain way where it'd be pretty much just like on paper, right? If I send this many, so I pretty much did some testing and I realized out of every 100 DMs I would send, I would land one meeting. Right. And then out of that one meeting, I'd say I started sending like 250 DMs a day. And I remember I'd get like at least five appointments a week. And then like one of those showed up to a demo and was actually interested and had the money. And then, yeah, so I was pretty much just starting up in my numbers. You so. needed like 1,250 DMs per qualified demo. Exactly. Yeah. So 
what I started was, so the reason why most people fail is because they don't have a clear path, a clear goal on what to do. They just know they want to hit that 10K per month mark. And which they is say, like, yeah, I'm going to send some DMs. People are like, yeah. yeah, let me start an SMA. Like I was talking to uh, someone on the coaching call the other day and I'm, I'm like, how are you, what's your plan? And he's like, I'm going to just send some DMs. I'm like, mm -hmm. that, 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 there's no clarity in that plan and clarity equals confidence. Exactly. So, yeah, like I see so many people like um, on discords. I see some people in like Facebook groups posting. I get so many DMs of, of people saying, you know, I've been starting my, I've been having my agency for like a couple months now. It's been like eight months. I still haven't got any clients. And then I asked them a simple question, like how much hours did you do yesterday? How much did you do the day before? And they're pretty much just like blank. They just didn't do any or they send like a couple of messages. And I'm like, there's your reason. some DMs. Yeah. That's what they'll say. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yeah. So, so then you reversed engineered it. Like w walk us through your numbers. Yeah. So I said, you know, if I want to get to 10K per month, that's about five clients at 2K each. So I was like, okay, um, let me send some IG DMs. I upped my number to like 500 IG DMs a day. I had about 10 Instagram accounts and I started sending DMs. I realized out of every like 100, 250 DMs I would send, I would land a demo, right? And then I pretty much just- How many demos did you need to close? I'd say I, I needed, about, at that time, I needed about at least like eight demos. So, and it was like unqualified demos. I wasn't good at sales. I wasn't good at setting the expectations right on the calls which then I started learning by, you know, getting on the agency lab calls, learning about the intro frameworks, the demo frameworks, how to like, you know, actually talk to clients, what to, you know, sell them on and all these things. And then I realized out of every 250 DMs I'd send, I land um, a demo. And then I was like, all right, let me you just- You needed uh, eight. Eight demos to close a client. So like 2,000 DMs. Mm -hmm, around there. So I get my VA to send those DMs and I started, I landed a client. I remember getting- like so you need to send 10,000 DMs to get five clients. Exactly. I didn't really go the full DM route. Um, it, it, and that's okay. It's more yeah. like, that's how you need to think about exactly. it. Exactly. That's, that's how you need to it. process the information. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, now I have a plan. T send 10,000 yeah. DMs. Here's, I'm going to send it every single day, this many. By this date, I should have at least, even if you don't hit 10K a month, like you should have yeah, way exactly. more momentum, way more progress than if you just said, yeah, I'm going to send some DMs. Mm -hmm. And you, the decisions you make now can affect your decisions, like your outcome in like the next month or so. Or you can say, I'm gonna send 500 DMs every day for the next 30 days. That's about five clients for me. That's, that's, how, that's how I kind of framed it, right? So it's like um, based on your closing rates, how you can close people from the intro call to the demo call and from the demo call to, you know, actually becoming a client. And so, yeah, I pretty much just cracked that out. Just like, you know, breaking down my goals. Like I'm gonna do 500 DMs a day, that's it. Like I don't have to do anything else. People are like, oh, service delivery, sending appointments, closing appointments. Um, they're lost. They have so much things in their mind that's just, you know, flowing through when they start an agency. But from the zero to 10K, it's pretty much just all setting appointments and closing appointments, right? Getting people, um, getting those appointments, you know, DMing people, cold emailing people, setting those appointments. And then, you know, on this on the actual call, you know, just closing them. And I feel like you kind of have to dumb it down and explain to people through it that way. Because people don't really understand. You say setting appointments, closing appointments, but People don't know what that means. How many DMs do you think people think it takes to close five clients? Probably way less. Like I'd say someone thinks, oh, I'm gonna send like 500 DMs, you know, um, out of every 500, 100 should I at least turn into a client. That's what someone told me when I was- um, No way. Yeah, someone was actually like, oh, okay, like, yeah, I'm, uh, I should be sending, I should be getting this many clients. You know, I have a plan to send like 10 DMs a day. I'm gonna get this many clients. Those people that were like, oh, I'm gonna send 30 DMs a day. I'm like, bro, 30? What, what is 30 DMs? That's, that's nothing. Yeah. What I tell people is like, you should match the number of outreaches should match the number of impressions that you get from your ads. Mm -hmm. So like if your cost per acquisition is a thousand bucks and a thousand bucks gets you 20,000 impressions, you should be sending 20,000 to emails, DMs, et cetera, et cetera. You're essentially putting yourself out there in front of people that many times. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So yeah. And just like breaking down By the way, goals. with a thousand dollars, cost per acquisition on average, like you should be getting like one to two clients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, think about that. Yeah. And then from there, I just started breaking down my goals. So like, you know, in five weeks after to hit 10 K per month, I got to close a client a week. Um, that's about, uh, eight demos, 10 demos a week. Let's say I have like a 40% close rate and pretty much just started like making all these calculations and it was all like a numbers game, right? I wrote it down. I wrote it down on my whiteboard. I saw it was it like trading. Day. You yeah, it was like trading. It, exactly. But you control the outcome. Exactly. It's it's all a number ga numbers game when it comes to the agency model. And yeah, I got to I, I started closing clients. I closed a client from cold email, um, closed a client from Instagram DMs, 
And yeah, I pretty much just worked my way up to 10K per month. And I hit 10K in, I'd say, March, start of March. I remember I sent you that video. I was like, yo, I hit 10K finally. And then, yeah, it was like within the span of like three months, um, I hit that 10K mark. But I was at 0K for like the first two months. So when I went from, when I did that breakdown, right, I went from like 0 to 10K per month in like, in like three weeks. It was, it was crazy. I started like getting all these appointments, like starting mass DMing, double the amount of DMs I was sending, triple the amount of emails I was sending. I started hiring VAs. And yeah, so I, I got to that 10K mark. And after that, I pretty much lost all my clients because um, I didn't focus any anything on, I didn't focus like a single like minute of my time on service delivery. I, I pretty much just thought, you know, I'll, I'll set these guys up for next week. I'll set them on onboarding call. I'll outsource it to someone else. So I outsourced it to some media buyer that I paid $600 for, for each client. And he pretty much ended up scamming me because um, he just ran away with the money. Right? He was supposed to fulfill, he was supposed to run the ads. He was supposed to call the leads. Um, yeah, he pretty much just ran away. He just like disappeared my money. And I couldn't file a chargeback because I paid him in crypto. So. Yeah, Dude, I lost you should see of, a trend here with crypto, by the way. <laughs> Anytime crypto is involved, it's like... You should just get out of crypto. Mm-hmm. You should turn that into USD. <laughs> Cash. Yeah. But yeah, from there, um, I, it lost and affect me, like right, I told you. So, so how mu- did you go from that to 30K a month? Yeah, so I went to 0 This is all happening quickly. Like, Yeah, it's really fast. Like, I'm seeing results really fast because I'm like, you know, breaking everything down so I know exactly what I need to do to exactly my goal. And I was like, you know, why not just make this faster and like triple, I just started going all in. And yeah, so I had quite a bit of money with ads for with my um, previous clients that, that they paid me. So I had quite a bit of money. I started like researching on how to run ads for your own agency. And I think that was the best, one of the best decisions I've ever made, just running ads for my own agency, right? If you think about it, if you're running ads to for your clients to get more patients or get more roofing jobs or get more appointments, why would you not run ads for your own agency, right? It's kind of like a no brainer. You can you can target people in your niche. You could target dentists, you could target med spa owners and say, you know, I'll guarantee you this many appointments in this many days. There's a whole breakdown on it in the agency lab calls. I mean, we literally have a YouTube video yeah, where we show you how to do it exactly. for free, step by step. We literally go and build the ads out. Yeah. And yeah. for all the different niches. Exactly. And there's like an ad swipe file. It's pretty much all the information you need Right. Once you kind of make some money from there, then that's when you buy the program. But yeah, so that's how Joel has it set up. Right. So you would make money first and then, you know, you would invest into the program. If you want, you also don't have to. Yeah, exactly. Um, like if you're like, hey, I just want to make money with the free stuff mm-hmm. and then screw you, Joel. Like that's 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 all right. Exactly. Like if you're adding value to the world and getting paid, that's that's all good with me. You know, mm. I'm OK with leaving some money on the table. Yeah. Do you think that? Um, OK, so then you started doing paid ads. You had a big. Uh, switch of your niche. Yeah. And then and you I got started to like the medical niche. Yeah, medical niche. Um, I niche. No, I was I was already in the medical niche at this stage, right? Okay. But I started sub niching down, right? So instead of going for med spas or wellness clinics, instead of saying, hey, we help wellness clinics do get this many patients, I started sub niching down to a specific procedure. Yeah. yeah. Like, so a specific treatment, right? So let's say if you guys are doing med spas, instead of saying, you know, we help med spas, say we help. Med spa is doing specifically Botox or Med spa is doing specifically body sculpting or these treatments. Cause that way you can present yourself as a company that's, you know, specialized in specifically that treatment only, right? Which can give you a huge leverage over the market. Cause you know, there's a lot of competition. So you can frame yourself as the only company in the world that only focuses specifically on that specific treatment, which gave me a huge leverage, which gave me huge leverage to getting actually clients. And then, yeah, I started running ads for the specific treatment and I was getting really cheap leads. I was getting booked appointments. I remember when I first launched my ads, um, my calendar got filled out like the entire week. It was obviously lower quality prospects. It was some people that were looking to get the treatment that I was advertising. So I had to filter through those. And then I remember that week I closed like two clients, got like 4K. Um, the next week I closed like another two clients. So I had like 8K recurring. So everything started happening really fast. like. Cause I had all these appointments and then I remember hopping a couple of agency lab calls, learning more about paid ads. And then, so I realized my acquisition cost to get a client was about $279. Jesus. So every time I would send, spend wait, 200, wait, wait, we should explain that, that what that means. Oh, you were yeah, about to, you were about to. Yeah. So every time I would spend $279 on ads, that's what it would cost for me to get a client. 
right? So to spend 279. That's really good. Like yeah. when I was running my agency, I was paying about a thousand or a thousand five hundred mm. to land one client. And my goal was like, if I could break even the next, the first month, then ev everything after that is pure profit. Exactly. That's, that's a, that's a framework I had in mind as well. Right. But then I started getting these cheap leads. And the reason that that was because I was sub niche to a specific procedure, right? So you could go after, instead of scaling vertically, going for med spas and adding all these treatments to your services, just say, you know, we help med spas get Botox. Um, we help med spas get body sculpting patients. And, you know, you can specialize in that area. And then, you know, it would stand out from all these other companies running ads for med spas. So that's what I think that helped me a lot. That's what I think everyone should currently do in the agency space, right? Sub niching down onto specific procedures and, you know, hopping onto procedures. Even for like procedure. roofing, like we help with like storm damage. Exactly. Or jobs. insurance roofs. Yeah. It's very clear. Like mm -hmm. no one is doing that. Everyone's like jobs. Yeah. But what kind? Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, once you kind of start working with them, you can obviously say, oh, we'll do, we'll add on this procedure for like this much amount of money. You know, we'll help you with your other tr treatments as well as an upsell. That's what I started doing. And then, yeah, I'd get these clients. I spent $279 to acquire clients. And then what I did was pretty much just up my ad spend, right? The amount it's of spending every day. Yeah. Way better than crypto. I was like, yeah, I can, I can actually like do some calculations and just make money off of those, right? I don't have to rely on a specific like trend or like rely on a specific like coin going up and then I would make money. So yeah. So how do you go from, so now you're what? What? Are, what are I was around at? At 8K per month, right? So I started focusing more on service delivery. I had an okay service delivery, right? From that zero to 10K per month mark, you need to just have an okay service delivery, right? Just most of your time should be just spent on um, setting appointments, closing appointments. And then from that 10K plus mark, that's when you start focusing a little more on product, on client success and all these other factors. So yeah, zero to 10K per month, just, you know, focus on service delivery, uh, focus on setting appointments, closing appointments and service delivery, you know, after you hit 10K per month, you know, after 10K per month, you have to completely switch your mindset. Your, your brain has to, you know, shift around, right? Cause it's like way different it's from going to zero product. to 10K. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The analogy that I like to give, and it's not that uh, results don't matter. Of course they do, but it's like you're in the airplane. What do they tell you when, if there's a uh, lack of oxygen? Mm -hmm. They say, put the mask yeah. on yourself first, then help the person exactly. next to you. And it's like, if you don't have clients, you're not going to get them good results. Like period. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that people should do free trials first or uh, do performance based uh, partnerships with clients first to remove some of that risk. But once you have it dialed in, you yeah, should scale definitely. hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then what happened after that? Yeah. From there, I, I realized that, you know, if I spend $279, to get a client, I'm just going to up my ad spend. So I upped it to about a hundred dollars a day. And then I started closing more clients. I was at around, you know, 12, 12, um, 12 K per month. And from there, uh, my Facebook account kind of got restricted. So I could only spend around $50 a day. It wasn't really a restriction. It's just like, you know, saying, you know, you're not old enough or they required like proof of identification and all these things. So I could only spend $50 a day. That's a plug by the way, if you, if you need it. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> So from there, pretty much, I could only spend fifty dollars a day, and it started slowing down a little bit. But I was at that; I, I got to fifteen k per month, and then from there, I just started focusing more on my current clients, and then upselling them on more other other things, right? Other procedures that they were doing. Some clients are doing so. I would use a specific procedure uh, procedure to get foot in the door, and then you know upsell them on other procedures, right? So med spas, if I was helping them with weight loss, I would help them with, you know, I'll say, you know, your ads are doing really well for this. Let me just help you out with these other treatments. And then I would just upsell them, charge them $500 per additional treatment. Some clients had lots of locations. So I had this one client that had 10 locations and then I upsold them for all those locations for $500 a month. And that just one client pays me around $6,500 a month right, for all those locations. And he's spending around 80 grand a month on his ads. So I'm probably going to look, I'm going to look on um, upping the retainer as well. But yeah, so at that 15K mark, I started focusing on my current clients. For um, clients that you're spending a lot of money on, you could also just do a percentage of ad spend. Yeah, exactly. You could be like, also like, I think a 6,500 plus 10% of ad spend is probably going to be a little too much, but you could be like, hey, flat 10% of ad spend. Mm -hmm. You're still making an extra 2K right out exactly. of the gate. Yeah. So I started focusing on my current clients, upsold them on a bunch of things. I was at around that 20K per month mark from there. And then what happened was I made another Facebook account, started dialing my ads even more. This is just recently, I upped my ad spend to around $200 a day. And from there, I started closing like two, three clients a week and then ended it up with like 30K, I think we did 32K. Um, I ended off last week with, before coming here. So 32K-ish mark, yeah. That's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. 
So you're 17 at yep. 30K a month. What's next? Are you going, are you going to go back to school now? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't think I'd ever go back to school. Like, like, what, like what do you, like, are you, you're not showing up at all the high school? I no, I, I pretty much just dropped out. Like, I remember they called me, they were like, oh, you're not showing up to class. We're going to withdraw you from the school. And I was What'd like, okay, just, just do it. <laughs> like it felt, it felt pretty cool at the moment. But, um, yeah. So my dad still to, to this day, he doesn't know I dropped out. He doesn't even know I'm, I'm in Denver. Really? Um, yeah. So hopefully your parents he, he lives in me. a different country, right? So he, his like business is there and stuff. He, he like wants me to, you know, go to university and stuff. And he thinks I'm, you know, going to university next year. I'm, I'm in, I'm in school right now. Bro, your studying. dad probably hates me. No, I feel like if I, if I show him what I'm doing and I, I think he would be proud of you. I'm going to show him at hundred K when I hundred K I'm going to show him just like, yo, hundred K per month. And That's then, cool. Yeah. I still think he'd be proud of you. Mm -hmm. To me, you seem like, uh, I think in the lens of society, you're probably seen as like someone who's disassociated, disconnected, yeah. not doesn't care about what's important. But from my perspective, I see you as someone that has gone all in multiple times. Mm -hmm. You've continued to bet on yourself over and over and over and over again. Yeah, You're someone that is creatively problem solving and always looking to grow, always looking to see the bright side in any situation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's even more valuable than the hundred exactly. K month. Not to get too sentimental, but like that's cool, man. I always say like judge people based on accomplishments is great, but judge people based on their character first. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather I'd rather you be a good person and be yeah not making a lot of money than you being a terrible person and being a billionaire. So it's like, mm -hmm. and you've that, and I actually think business kind of forces you to take a deep look at yourself and always be leveling up, leveling up, leveling up. Which is why I believe that a lot of people should go all in, even if they end up saying, you know what, I want to get a job. Exactly. Because then at least they face their fears. They looked themselves in the mirror. They looked at their weaknesses. They looked at their limitations and they continued to show up. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I see, I see you as uh, someone that's just getting started. You've got a lot to give. You're extremely yeah. smart. Like, and uh, I, I feel like I haven't even started yet. Like, no, I feel like not there's even. Just so much. Bro, you're warming up. So much potential. You haven't even started playing the game. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. What what do you think allowed you to succeed that other people don't? Like from my perspective, the the number one biggest thing is you've been at this for years. I think a lot of people look at like 10k a month. It's like, well, did you Not really just hit? Yeah. Did you hit 10k a month in 90 days, or mm -hmm. when did you start trading? Uh, when I was like 14, 15 ish. Or did you hit 10K a month in three years, right? Yeah. And it's like, of course you had hit it before in with crypto, but like not with a business. And I think it's very different. I think Way different. with crypto, different. with things like that, it's a matter of luck to a certain yeah. degree or to a big degree, actually. With business, it's like, no, I hit it. I made this happen. Exactly. exactly. But really, it took you three years. Yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, you know, grateful for everything that happened, right? I don't regret anything. Everything that happened happened for a reason. That's where I am today because of those things that happened. And, you know, I really want to thank my mom also. Like she supported me through the entire way, you know. She like bought her, that $300 drop. Yeah, that course. drop shipping course. Mm -hmm. Shout out to, to Armand's mom for doing that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. And she's also my biggest why, right? Because like, I feel like um, she pretty much like makes life so much easier for me. Like she literally, like I track all my food, right? I tr and she pretty much tracks my food for me now. She learned how to count calories and she like inputs it on how many calories based on each food. Wow. Right? She, she makes all my meals, uh, my high protein meals after I come from the gym. And like, I come back from the gym, my room is like spotless. I like the clothes like all over my closet, um, just like organized. And yeah, I just want to thank my mom. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah. That's really cool. She's like, she's making an irresistible offer for you to exactly. not move out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, if you move out, no one's going to be counting your mm -hmm. calories. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. she's gonna have to train my wife eventually in the future. Do that. <laughs> that's cool, man. But yeah, so yeah, that's that. And then the future, moving on. My goal currently is just scaling this agency up and then getting into at least 100, 120K per month and then selling it and then starting another agency. I wanna start at least three to four agencies and kind of master the agency game. And then from there, just, you know, um, starting agencies, selling agencies. And then from there, I'll just take equity in different agencies and, you know, help them scale up. So that's my current goal for now. And then at the end, you know, long term, I want to eventually build a school that's, you know, actually useful. And yeah, pretty much that's that's my end goal. What do you mean build a school that's actually useful? Like pretty much a school that gives you the stuff that um, the current school doesn't give you, right? The current education system. And yeah, it's pretty much just build a school that would teach you actual things that matter in life. Um, proper values, becoming a better person, uh, just focusing on what matters. 
if you really are passionate about that, I would actually tell you the, the biggest thing that you could do right now to get started is to just keep sharing your story. Yeah. Cause I think, um, you are an example of, you're an example of the fact that there are other paths that people can take to be successful. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you showing that is going to give people belief and hope. And then I also think that like, you should just post on YouTube more. Just yeah, share what's I definitely working. need to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just document um, your journey. Like that's cool. But the best school right now, I'd say in the agency game is, you know, definitely agency lab, right? I remember, You're hyping me up too much. No, it's actually, it's actually true, right? I feel like the best purchase I've ever made in my entire life By the life way, I don't, was, I don't ask you to say no, this No, Joel's stuff. not paying me. Yeah, that's, I just want to make that Maybe. clear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, pretty much my like 17 years li- existing on this planet, agency lab was the best purchase I've ever purchased. And you know, it's great what Joel's kind of doing for the space, right? People are like lost and I feel like Joel helps, you know, people navigate to the right path kind of. Yeah. And it's definitely not going to be easy and it definitely takes a lot of time. And to be honest, not everyone succeeds. Like this is not for everyone, but I think like I'm truly on a mission to give people the greatest chance of success if they want to go an alternative path. Like I tell my Mm. team members all the time, like you guys think we're just helping agency owners, but we're actually changing the game when it comes to education. Like that's what we're really doing. We're providing a different university. And instead of you know, charging, you know, a hundred grand. It's like, we make it more affordable and we coach you on how to grow a business. And then it's really like the modern day business school, yeah. right? Like mm-hmm. SMMA, is just like the word on the, it's just a, uh, the keyword for it. But like, yeah. we're teaching you sales, we're teaching you marketing, we're teaching you operations, we're teaching you client success. We're teaching you how to build strategic relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're, we're teaching you how to add value, how to give back, how to inter- interact with other people in the community, how to collaborate, like that's business. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think the agency model is the best model for any beginner to start because right? you're learning all the skills. Um, I was talking to Sergio the other day and he was like, you know, Sergio um, Tavares is my business partner yeah, by the way, for those of you guys that don't know. Yeah. He was telling me the reason why he's so su- successful is because, you know, he wore all the hats starting his agency. He was the operations manager. He was handling fulfillment. He was closing clients, setting appointments, closing appointments, all these other hats that you're supposed to wear at the start of the agency. And that's going to, you know, give you all the skills you need to, you know, focus on other business ventures later down the line. I'm not saying, you know, you always have to do the agency model for the rest of your life. No, I don't think, I think for most people, they shouldn't actually do it for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. I think it's a starting point. Yeah, I definitely think it's the best business model. It's like a crash course on business. Exactly. You're learning all the skills you need. And, you know, that's definitely going to be beneficial for like any other type of business. Like, you know, taking equity in certain businesses or actually, you know, maybe potentially starting another clinic in the future down the line, right? You would still have some skills, you know, obviously better than, you know, people who currently own clinics. Like I speak to doctors that have no clue what they're doing in their business. They're not tracking anything. And, you know, I, if I can like turn their business upside down or like completely flip their business around, then, you know, why can't I just open a clinic and do it myself? You could. Right? Yeah. I think like the, the biggest game to be, if, if you actually want to do agency at the largest scale, like People think SMMA is like, I get paid $1,500 a month in exchange yeah. for some marketing. SMMA at the largest scale is private equity. Like literally either starting businesses mm-hmm. in your niche, like launching a dental practice and partnering with a dentist or buying a dental practice, exactly, yeah. building them up and then selling them, right? Like mm-hmm. that is SMMA at the highest level. People are just seeing it again on step one. They're missing the, they're not seeing the bigger picture of what is actually possible. You're getting oh. paid to grow a business. It's and, and you know what's crazy? Most businesses don't know how to grow. Yeah, exactly. Like they just start businesses. It's pretty much just like they're working. They're still working a nine to five. That's what I see is all my current clients. And then um, I help them out and, you know, dial out their systems. And then, you know, they're really grateful, right? Because they've, they've never seen anything like that before. They've always, you know, just worked on their own fulfillment. Yeah, they're very good at like the ser- the their service. Yeah. And that's what I tell them. I'm like, you guys are clinic owners. You guys aren't, you know, marketers. Let me handle this part. And... You know, you focus on treating your patients and they'll flip your business around. You know, I have a friend, his name is Lyle. He started a HVAC agency, mm-hmm. scaled it to multiple seven figures. And then now he runs an eight figure HVAC company. He's looking to wow. then buy up more HVAC companies, take equity in more HVAC companies in exchange for doing all of their growth, mm-hmm. all of their business development, and then rolling them all up for a massive nine figure exit. Yeah, that's, that's SMMA. Cool. SMMA, that's where it starts off with. Yeah, it's like, that's... Could you do that if he didn't start a marketing agency? Probably not. He mm-hmm. probably doesn't know how to grow a HVAC company from like yeah. and run their advertising and build their systems and automations and uh, nurturing sequences to get people to actually show up. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. So, 
what advice would you have to, to, well, two things. Can you promise me that no more crypto? Yeah. Got you. No more crypto. On, Maybe. On, bro. <laughs> when the bull market comes back, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> we got to like hold you accountable. Yeah. True. That's, that's my weak point. Damn. Yo, you got to learn that lesson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you got to like, here, here's what I'll say. Like the best, I've made some in interesting investments that have panned out, haven't panned out. I've lost a hundred thousand dollars here, you know, $200,000 on anchor. Like, um, I will say the one thing that's always given me a return. I've actually never lost money in a single month since starting my, starting my business career yeah. was my business. Mm -hmm. That's given me the single most consistent and biggest ROI over time. Yeah. What, you want to know why? It's because I'm betting on myself. Exactly. It's way easier to get a return on your investment when you are the investment. Yeah. I'm pre I was pretty much betting on the market. You know, if the market goes this way, I'll make this much money. Yeah, but you don't know. Yeah. You have to keep in mind, like the people that are making, there are people making serious money, but they have way more information than you do, mm -hmm. way more access. By the time you're seeing the market react, it's already too late. Yeah, that's true. That's my thought at least. Yes. Yeah, so, no more crypto for now, but. Bro, we're yeah. going to, can we put you on like a five-year ban? <laughs> like five-year. Uh, I actually got banned from my bank for trading crypto because I was good. underage. Yeah, good for that bank. They're looking out for you. Yeah. All right. So what piece of advice would you have for uh, teenagers? I'd say, you know, if you're pretty much watching this, most of you are under that 10K mark. I'd say, you know, just breaking down what you're doing from day-to-day -day tasks, right? Say, okay, how much outreach did, it, did you do today? And how much outreach did you do day four? Pretty much just breaking down your goals and saying, you know, just... Just pretty much just breaking down your goals, right? Saying, you know, I'm going to do this much amount of outreach every day, no matter how many positive replies I get, no matter how many negative replies I get, I'm just going to keep doing it no matter what happens. And then eventually you're obviously going to hit that certain revenue goal that you have in mind. As long as you stick to something for long enough, it's eventually going to hit, right? So that's just my goal. Just like, just taking action. Any like life advice? Um, I'd say question everything, every decision that happens, anything anyone tells you, question everything, look for answers, and then base um, whatever your answer would be based on all those questions, answers that you get, if you know what I mean. Like come up with your own answer. Come up with your own answer, yeah. Based on much. everything that people tell you, exactly. not just one thing that one person says yeah. to you. So like if someone t uh, tells you something, um, an answer to a question, then you find out what other people are saying and then have all those answers summed up and then build your own kind of answer in that area. That's cool. Yep. I like that. Well, thank you so much for coming on, man. Appreciate, Appreciate it, Joel. You.